Hey, 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 guys, it's Cut Light Smoke coming to you for the top 10 cigars of 2019. So as you guys know, at Ira Busto, we do a community list and we do individual top 25 lists for all of our reviewers. Uh, so myself included, obviously. For YouTube, for my Cut Light Smoke channel, I always do just a top 10 list video. If you have a beef with that, support a brother. Click the link in the description to see my top 25. So go check out Ira Busto. Give us a few clicks or two. And let us know what all you your or your thoughts on all the picks that we have. Check out the community list. That's voted by our viewers, not by us. So it's always kind of cool to do that. You guys are the ones that watch our videos and visit our site. So we always love supporting you guys and kind of seeing what you guys like the most. But today we're talking about my own personal top 10 list. So lots of good cigars from numbers 11 through 25. Overall, 2019 was moderately disappointing, I would say. Not terribly, but there wasn't, I wasn't wowed as much as I have been in past years. I'll say that. IPCPR was kind of an indicator of that. There were some really good cigars that came out, but as you will see with this list, there's a handful of manufacturers that got multiple spots. And I solely attribute that to the fact that a lot of people just didn't put out good cigars this year. Uh, or they really didn't put out much at all. For my top 10, I'll get kind of straight into it, guys. I'm not going to give you like a full review or anything on these. Feel free to check on my YouTube channel. I will have full reviews of them eventually or may have some of these already up by the time this video goes up. So anyways, guys, number 10 coming in from Placencia, the Alma del Fuego in the Candente size. So Alma del Fuego was the, one of the newest releases from Placencia this year at IPCPR. They had a really cool display with some like fake flames coming around a box. Uh, so anyways, Fuego and Fire, if you didn't know. But anyways, it's very, very good cigar, very complex, very rich flavors. I really enjoyed it. I've smoked a number of them since they first came out and solid, solid stick. I think that this cigar is potentially going to be a contender for Cigar Aficionado's top 25 for their number one cigar, just because of the family and the history and you know how it goes. But anyways, moving on. Number nine, Crown Heads La Coalition Corona Gorda. The Coalition, right? So this was a collab between Crown Heads and Drew Estate. I smoked one at IPCPR, had a number of them since. Very, very good, uh, very good smoke. Really rich flavor on this thing. It burns typically like any Drew Estate. Lots of smoke pouring off. Whether that's because they spray the leaves with something or not, we'll never know for sure. But anyways, it still burns well, and I really, really enjoyed it. Crown Heads has been one of my favorite brands for a long time. They put on a lot of good cigars that are made at a variety of places. I really enjoy what they're doing. I just, uh, Miguel, John, if you guys are listening, bring back Angel's Anvil 2016. That one, fire. One of my favorite cigars ever. So, But anyways, back to the list. Number eight, we've got the Emilio AF1 Robusto. This, I think, might be one of the more under-the-radar cigars for the year. I really hope there's a lot of other media sites that choose this for their list because this cigar just blew me away this year. Really, really good flavor. They re-blended the AF1 and the AF2, released that at IPCPR again, and I like my socks were knocked off with that thing. Really good smoke. Certainly recommend that one. Moving on to number seven, the Agonorsa Leaf Guardian of the Farm Nightwatch Orpheus. Now, this cigar was a follow-up to the original Guardian of the Farm, which was a mild to medium cigar, in my opinion. One of my favorites, though. Really nice, subtle complexities. Tasty, tasty stick. Now, this follow-up, the Night Watch, is a very bold version of that cigar. So, if you guys know me, you know I like a lot of bold cigars, bold flavors. I'm really kind of in the realm of the dark flavors is usually where I gravitate to. Not always, but with this one, it hit the spot. Really good size, really good flavor. Check it out. Number six is the Espinosa Laranja Reserva Escuro Corona Larga. Almost messed that up there. So Espinosa, always putting out some pretty consistent stuff. This one was one of the best I think they've released in years. Uh, Hector, man, you blended the shit out of this thing, and it is very, very good. You guys have seen that review more than likely. I posted that quite a while ago, actually. So watch the full review on that one. That one is definitely live. I really, really like that cigar. I think it's probably the closest Espinosa's gotten to like their, if you could say like their Padron, right? You know what I'm saying? The 1964s and 26s. 
And a lot of brands always have a cigar that's going to compete with that, or they try to. Well, this one hit the mark. Definitely a solid stick. Number five. I rarely put shop exclusives on my top 25 list, or I try not to, I guess I should say, because it's hard to get them. But when they are especially good, I do tend to let that happen. So this one is the Dunbarton Tobacco and Trust Don Derma. If you haven't heard anything about this, and I probably shouldn't even say this because y'all are going to go buy the boxes, but it comes from Secreto Cigar Bar in Michigan. It's in Detroit, uh, or suburb of Detroit. I went up there actually for the release for this cigar and enjoyed some Balvenie Scotch, all sorts of good times. Uh, really, really, really appreciate Ronnie's hospitality while up there, and I got to hang out with Steve See him again, that was nice, and we smoked Don Derma, which was released specifically for this cigar shop, Secreto. So at Secreto, they have Don Derma all sold out, but there are more coming. So you should be able to get these if you're quick enough. Uh, the day this video goes live, they might be gone, but Don Derma is for all you retro fiends. It has some of the richest flavor I've had in a cigar in a while. The retro hail is just tits. I love, 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 love that cigar. I've heard mixed things from people. Kind of really depends on your palate, just like all of this does. But for me personally, the Don Derma is top notch. So that takes number five. Number four is the Southern Draw Kudzu Lustrum. So if you all know Southern Draw, they celebrated five years in business this year. And so they came out with the Kudzu Lustrum to celebrate their five-year anniversary. Now, this cigar features some Medio Tiempo tobacco in it, which, if you don't know, is a very small leaf that grows at the top of the plant, not on every tobacco plant. So they're kind of hard to get a hold of. This cigar is phenomenal. I've probably gone through two or three bundles of these things, and I can't get enough of it. It's one of the best cigars Southern Draw has ever put out and probably the crown jewel of their portfolio at the current moment. So if you haven't tried that, check it out. It's pretty competitively priced too. So, And I believe there might be some more sizes coming out, but there is, if I'm not mistaken, there's a shop exclusive in a Toro, I think. Uh, but this one is a box press Bellicoso. Number three, Roma Craft. Can you guess it? Can you guess it? You probably all thought I was going to say Baca. But if you read the rest of my list, you might find out that's somewhere else. Not Baca. Baca is an excellent cigar, by the way. But it is the Neanderthal LH. I am a full-bodied fiend. I love strong cigars. I love complexity. I love craft. Roma Craft killed it with the LH. Neanderthal has always been a good blend, and everybody knows that, or any serious cigar smokers tend to know that. But with the LH, it's a new box press size, real fat, chunky chocolate bar. Phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal cigar. Best size in that blend yet. Uh, Neanderthal has absolutely hit my top 25 list in the past in different sizes, but this one is the best one they've done. So if you're all raging about Baca, get off of that train for now. Hop on some LH. Save the Baca for when it's a little warmer out. Charlie, shut up. Moving on to number two. Who claimed number two? Who could it be? Do you have a guess? Yasum Kral. I am king. Risty Rostevsky claiming number two this year. Kind of, uh, I wouldn't say newbie in the industry, but relatively young company. Yasum Crawl, I reviewed the Red Knight originally uh, as the first uh, reviewer to smoke and review that cigar. Uh, Risty is an Indiana guy. I am also in Indiana. He's a little further away from me though. But anyways, he put out some new stuff this year. And if you haven't checked it out, you're probably living under a rock. So number two is the Yasum Crawl Tyrannical Buck Connecticut Dobles. Oh my God. This thing is better than pretty much most Cuban cigars. It has a Cuban-esque flavor profile a little bit, but also some rich Nicaraguan tobacco in there too. I really, really, really enjoy this thing. And it's I'm not a huge Connecticut guy. But this one is an exception. There are a few Connecticut cigars on the market I've really enjoyed. A lot of them are bland and one-dimensional, and they just don't got anything going on. This thing has strength. It tends to be stronger than the Maduro variant of the same cigar. So try it out. It's really, really, really good. Super simple band, but I think that was intentional to show the quality of the cigar over buying a band. What do you know? Too many people focus on the way a cigar looks, and they don't focus on what it tastes like. So if you haven't tried the Tyrannical Buck, 
Connecticut or Maduro. Maduro is really good too, but the Connecticut's my preference. You definitely need to get on that. That's my number two cigar of 2019. And the big one, number one cigar of 2019 for Cut Light Smoke. You might guess this one. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe not. This is a uh, winner from past years uh, as far as the company is concerned. And this is one of the companies out there that I think is doing a phenomenal job at putting out consistently above average, far above average cigars. And they deserve some recognition for this because I have not had better cigars in the last, I would say, five years than what I typically get from this company. So this one, number one of the year, Dunbarton Tobacco and Trust, Mi Carita, Tricky Traca, Robusto. Comes in two sizes. There's a 6x48 as well, which is excellent. But the Robusto has a little bit more of, I would call it thickness. It's like a chewy smoke. This cigar is Mi Carita on crack. It is unreal. I The first time I smoked one, I hadn't gotten a chance to smoke it actually before I did my top 10 of IPCPR. It may have claimed that list as well at the time, just depending on how they were smoking. But I bought two or three boxes myself. Once I started trying them, I really couldn't get enough. And it's the, the most smoked cigar I've had this year. I haven't had anything as much as I've had Tricky Traca. Really, 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 really good cigar. So go get some. But anyways, like I said, the 6x48 is really good. But the Robusto is far superior in my opinion. Anyways, guys, that's my top 10 cigars of 2019. Really hope you guys like the list. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know what picks you think I might have missed or if I got them right. Um, I don't really care, but I'm interested to talk to you guys about it and see what you think. So check out our community list on iRobusto. Link is in the description, but you guys enjoy it. And again, congrats to all the winners. We appreciate your support. Hope you guys have a happy new year and a Merry Christmas, I guess, in the other order. But um, anyways, that's all I got or else I'll start rambling. Peace.